I'm Dan with Six Monkeys. Uh, this is going to be a little video on our, our press brake that we built and developed. It's a six foot, 40 ton. Uh, we use it every day. We've been using it for uh, about eight months now. It's done awesome. So we've added it to our website as a fab file. So you can purchase the files and build one yourself. Um, we did this because we, we, we had a couple obstacles we had to get over. Uh, we have no way of bringing in a brand new press brake. They're just too big to get in our, our facility. We, we wanted to save as much money as we could. Uh, we looked at used machines and they were just horrible. So we uh, decided to build our own. So we designed it, built it. it. Took us about two weeks to do so. It's been awesome. We've been primarily breaking uh, 12 gauge with it, just daily and up to six foot. These, a lot of guys ask me, you know, how thick it could bend. That's, it's not about thickness, it's about tonnage. So your bottom V die will determine uh, what thickness you can bend. So the, the thicker the material, the wider the V die you need at the bottom. Um, I used to use a little Harbor Freight press with a, a 20 inch die in it. And it was really limiting. We couldn't do big stuff. Uh, you, you couldn't pull dies or remove dies and add dies in certain places. So it was really limiting on us. And uh, the workaround at the time was to slice all the bends and then weld them, grind them down. Uh, this machine, uh, we designed it so the bottom dies kind of float. We have back stops so they, they center up. You can move them around. And the top has six inch plates. And you can undo the plates, remove a die, shift a die, uh, do whatever you need to do to uh, be able to make the bends you want to make. Uh, we built a little die holder for it, a little uh, holder for uh, a drill. It's really handy to have that to tighten and loosen all your bolts. We've got these uh, shelf brackets that slide into the front to help hold your, hold your parts for your bending stuff. Uh, overall, super happy with it. We want the community to be able to build these as well. Uh, buy the files, build them, modify them, uh, just have fun. But you know, continue being creative. Don't be limited by your tools. So I'm gonna go over this thing, kind of show its construction, uh, show how it does for for us for bending. Uh, we'll bend a couple parts, and just overall go through the whole thing. Um, the really cool thing about this is is being built in-house, we have the ability to repair it in-house and not have to wait on stuff. Um, obviously, there's components we had to buy. We had to buy the cylinders, we had to buy the pump, uh, we had to buy some micro switches, and you know that stuff we can either have repaired locally or we can just buy a new one. Um, everything for this thing we got off of Amazon, just super easy. You can just build your cart, have everything you know shipped to you, and then all you have to do is get the fab files and cut out what needs to be cut out, milled what needs to be milled, um, drill and tap everything. Uh, it's a really fun project to do, and it's a really awesome tool. So let's uh, walk around this thing a little bit, and we'll show how everything kind of works, every, how everything moves, and uh, how to kind of assemble and build it yourself. All right, so we're gonna go through a, a build overview of this, kind of give you guys some tips and tricks and uh, things that I've I had to do to build it. Um, it does take some patience, it takes a lot of laying out stuff and um, all of that is in the files you buy. Uh, but this is going to give you some good detail on, on how to assemble it and the crucial things that need to happen to be able to get it to operate properly. And, and lastly, we'll do a, an operation video, kind of show you how we use this daily. I'll bend up a couple parts and you can see how everything kind of works for me. Um, it's pretty standard press brake stuff, but you know, for you guys that have small shops and, and need something like this, it's a, you know, give you a good idea of what it's capable of. So let's get into how this thing is, is assembled and put together and the things that we did to make it happen. All right, we're gonna uh, kind of give you an idea how we assembled this thing. And we built it in four main components. Um, we have two cross members. There's one up top here. There's one down below and in the back. Uh, we have two main bodies, so we have one main body, two main bodies, and we have the upper and lower decks. We, uh, we built them out as much as we could, 
um, as individual pieces and then brought them all together where this thing was going to live and finished it in this spot. Uh, so that way we didn't have to figure out how to move it. We added, we've got all these holes down here where you can, you can add some accessories. You can see I have a drill holder. You can add your, your shelves. This is made out of one inch by 12 inch. Uh, super stout, it's not gonna bow on us. And it's really important to have it real, real stout. So that way when you're bending stuff in the middle here, which is really the best place to bend, keep everything square, uh, it will, you know, it's gonna keep it all stout. Uh, the top is made from the same material. And what we did was mill a groove um, that's right underneath here. And we build a, a half inch by five inch groove to accept American tooling. So this is available everywhere. We purchased the upper die and the lower dies. All these plates are also have a groove machine in the back so they all get a good clamp on all the dies. Super cool because it's not, it's not limiting and we're, we're properly distributing the load. These are our slides. The slides are super important. It's what keeps everything true. Going up and down doesn't have play. And to achieve that, we used a cold rolled flat bar. Uh, you can also add shims in here to make them slide easy. So what I did was uh, machined them out and then added paper shims between the clamp plates. And that allowed us to shim it out properly to where that thing was gonna ride smooth. And obviously it requires maintenance, so every once in a while I'll, I'll take some uh, machining oil, and put some oil on these slides, keep them running nice. The lugs are all made of one inch, one inch plate. It's where the cylinders mount to. Same thing with up top. And we ran a, a big lug up top here. Uh, that way it, the load kind of distributes not only up, but it's, you also have some vertical weld. It makes it really stout. Let's uh, walk around to the side here and show you our limit switches. We have a foot pedal for operation, and we also have limit switches on the sides with a gauge. Set your stops, your up and down. Um, really handy for repeatability. If you're running 100 of one parts, you can set the, the down stop and just keep going over and over and over again. You don't have to have an angle box on it watching what angle you're at. So let's uh, take a look at the side here and show you how we did it. All right, this is the side of our machine where all of our limit switches are. Um, I have an, a limit switch here. Kind of hear it click. Um, that's the, the upstroke. And I tune that by just having a, a little ring on a bar here. When the limit switch hits it, it, it stops the upstroke. Um, for the downstroke, I have a, a dial indicator. And when you rotate this, it moves the slide up and down, which makes contact with the, the lower limit switch. So what I'm able to do is, you know, uh, bend one, leave the die down, turn it up until the, the switch clicks. And then I take note of my numbers. So I have 11, 18. And uh, I make note of that and my bend degree. And then I've just made a chart to be able to bend degrees without having to use an angle finder. Pretty neat little feature. It's all kind of compact over here. It's simple, no electronics other than limit switches. And the limit switches just interrupt the foot pedal. Uh, so it makes wiring that in super easy. Uh, definitely a handy thing to have especially if you're running a lot of parts. All right, so while we're over here on this side, I wanna show kind of how everything lines up. Uh, you have your, your main upper deck, and you have the, you can see the centers of your cylinders up top, down below. And you can see it transverses, the center of that transverses right down to the center of the die. Uh, this is super important to have everything lined up perfectly. Keeps anything from wanting to shift side to side you have to have download right on your bending point. Um, that's, that's really important. Uh, another thing you can kind of see here is where we milled this notch, the length of the seven, the six foot long upper deck. And that's where your tooling goes in. And you can kind of see where we notched these otter plates. We, have, we took the center of it and milled it out a little bit. And so when you tighten this down, it, it puts pressure up top here as well as on the die. So that holds your die in place. If you left that just flat, your dies would just slide out. 
You can also see on the end here, we use a half inch bar on, on the top and we have gussets about every six inches or so. Uh, this is cold rolled, so it's nice and nice, it's really nice material. It's nice and flat. Uh, we didn't have to resurface it. And, but the, the important thing here is to see how the center line of everything matches up all the way to the cylinder mount points. It's really important. All right, we're gonna sew this backside construction, and uh, before we do so, I want to answer a couple questions. So the, the main question I get is, how does the upper deck stay square? Now, we're not running any valves or anything like that, or servos, I wanna keep it simple. But it also needs to stay, stay true and square. Uh, to achieve that, I'm running a rotary equalizer, and this is a plus or minus 1% over an eight inch stroke. Um, so that is our primary equalizer. Keeps everything equal from cylinder to cylinder. Uh, the other thing that we're doing is we're running these big long slides. These long slides, um, they, they, they don't want to move not parallel from each other. They wanna stay parallel, so that helps. The, the other big thing that keeps everything square is this rack and pinion system that we have set up back here. So this rack is, is this gear strip is, is welded to the upper deck. We have a gear that runs in it. So when this side turns and the deck moves up and down, it transverses that energy to the other side, which makes the other side move parallel with it. So between the combination of the three, it keeps this deck really, really square super happy with, with how it performs. Um, as far as construction wise back here, uh, it's pretty simple. Um, the main thing is, is your placement of your rack, where you wanna put, put the mounts for it. You wanna make sure you have clearance for your, your bolts that hold your slide together. But it really doesn't matter which set this thing sits between, um, as long as your gear makes contact at all times with your rack. Backside of this thing is pretty self-explanatory of how it how it kind of goes together. Yeah, let's uh, do some uh, action shots here and show everything in action.